Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Son's Real Tech Mod Pack. So in this episode what I'd like to do is a little bit looking at that um, redstone automation again. <laughs> You'll see I've got a flame because that's because the climatization is actually reaching 32 blocks which I hadn't realised. I think that's the distance. Anyway, let's start with that one. So I set up this um, thermal electric generator over here as we had it before in the previous episode so except for this time we've used packed ice instead of ice and we've got this uranium block and what I was trying to get to it was the um, this block the energy valve so I messed it up a bit well, of course it did because it's the first time I used it in fact it took me actually rather a long time to figure out oops missed <laughs> figure out how to get it to work so let's have a look I'll do that first of all and then we can have a look at other bits and pieces related to the mod. I have to get sort of this angle. So it gets the blue side's the input and the green side's the output. And in fact you can see the arrow, the direction is correct. So I got that bit right. And then you put on here the connectors. I think it doesn't this does not work with magnetic craft. So the magnetic craft power it doesn't work with. So that was one problem because I was testing with magnetic craft power as well. And I'll show you how I figured it out in the end. So we connect it up like this. This block has got 31,100 RF in it. So that's connected up. Now it's still not got it. It's not going through. There's no power going through. But we need to put an LED display on top of this thing. And we've got three LED displays. You'll see in why in a second. In fact, well, the best thing to do is jump up and put one on. <laughs> Try again. There we go. So it says it's zero, and that's actually correct. So now if we look at this thing here, this indicator is actually what it says it is. Quite often they're not. They are quite often the next level, so showing what it's doing next. And I think that was part of my problem. So if I click this it changes to flow so now it says it's 21 and sure enough this is going up so we can go back to the limit one set it back to zero so that should set it back to zero i don't think this goes up anymore no it doesn't so we go to the next part <laughs> well that was really <clears throat> not clever was it so the next thing we're going to do is have a look at the sensor part of this because you can attach sensors to these things we need to make a couple of sensors. I don't think I made anything in advance. No. I have been collecting a bit of ice in the winter time because winter's actually gone now. We're coming in, uh, into spring slowly. In fact, I think we might even be in spring now because the climatization might have gone off. Let's have a look. Nope, we're still in winter. But it doesn't. Uh, I was there and it hasn't changed my temperature. But where's it gone to? Oh yeah, that makes more sense. So we're going to get hot again. Now, so the sensors are these things. So what we need to do, first of all, we need to make a sensor housing, which is, or a sensor reader, is one of these things. So, so we need another quartz, two slabs, one chest, and uh, a 32-bit signal wire. We made one of those last time for the other one. In fact, they're in here. Let's get those out of there from the previous time. I don't think there's anything else in there that I need. Sl down slabs, probably. And they're in this chest here. Got 32. Let me take them out of there. So we need to make a sensor first of all. Well, I'm missing nether quartz, of course, yes. Let's take some nether quartz. I'll take a stack for the starters and make sure that will that'll be plenty. So we should then do should be able to do the sensors again. Like that. And I think I probably need some more of these things. So then we've got three to diff five different types of sensors. So we've got an item sensor that shows you how much is in there. Fluid sensor, energy sensor, time sensor and the remote comparator. Well, the one I'm interested in at the moment is energy, so let's do this. So we need a blank sensor and a piston. So blank sensor is this, so it's, we should have almost everything except for the comparator, which is also in here. Let's get that comparator out. No, nope, I need to make a new comparator. Is that cobblestone? Yeah, I forgot. 
Just stone. Okay, good. Plenty of stone around. Let's take a stack and make sure we've got plenty. Put that into here. So I don't have to keep going back for more. So let's try that again. So we can make one comparator. Good. And therefore, we should be able to make this. So we get four blank sensor modules. So we're going to make an electric one, which is a, basically a piston, wasn't it? So pistons, I've got. I made some pistons between episodes, anyway. So let's try this now. So now we have our energy sensor. So we've put this energy sensor into the sensor reader here. So then we want the displays, which we've got already. These these two here. We made those last time. And the recipe for that was uh, glowstone, another quartz, and slabs again. It's not too expensive, but obviously you've got to be too, you've got to be getting no, uh, glowstone. Fortunately, we're getting a bit of glowstone from the mob farm anyway. So let's set this up here. Now this took me a bit f a while to figure out as well. So let's put this down here and here. Now these two are separate. So what we have to do now is we want to connect this sensor here. To these two blocks. So what we do is we shift right click this onto that one and then it says if you look at the sensor now it's actually telling you what it's got in there. 3499 kilojoules which is what we've got in RF I think 3500. No I'm slightly wrong actually. We'll come back to that in a minute. So what we do then is put the sensor on top of this like this. And then that connects this to that, and then we need to put this into there. And then, oh, I'll try again. In fact, the multiplier for joules uh, for RF is ten. So you press ten and hit enter, and then it works. So it says nor. I ain't sure exactly sure what nor means, but I guess it means not enough, something or other. So what you do then, you right-click this display here, and it says decimal. You right click this display here and you can click it left and then that basically links to the neighboring display on the right so then you can see three four nine eight six which is the correct number of course obviously you go bigger up the more you go up so i tried to do this with the magnetic craft and discovered i couldn't do it so i knew it wasn't compatible so that's how i figured out this so this is generating 21 RF per tick. So let's go and improve that now. See so if we can double it. So I've got another packed ice and another a block of uh, uranium. Let's just that out of the way. Oh, it doesn't really matter where you put these. I'm going to put them on the other two faces. So let's put that down like that and then this one down like that. Let's go and have a look at the current flow. Now that was, is actually changed. That's limited, isn't it? Still, we're still on limited mode. Didn't change the value. In fact, you can actually put a switch. You can put a lever on that. I'll come back in a minute. So we can wrong time. Let's just change this now to flow, and you see it's now doubled. It's 42 RF per tick. So that's going up to 40. Actually, that's not bad for one little small device. So let's go make another one of these thermoelectric generators, um, and then connect that up as well. I'll see you in a second. I'm gonna do that. I'll do that off camera. Right. I think I've got everything we need. So let's put this one down. I think we could put it down here, like that, and then we can put two on the other two faces, we can put two pieces of packed ice, like that, and of course you could put another one down there and two more uranium, etc, etc, so we've got two of these now, unfortunately this isn't going to work is it, because I need to do it slightly differently, but we know this is going to produce, um, 42 RF, so we should get 88. So let's just go and get the next thing. I need a pole. Have oh, I got one with me? Or a relay? I'll tell you what, I'll go and get the pole and relay and come straight back. Well, I've got the pole. Let's put the pole down. Can I put the pole down here? Yes, I can. Good. So I need to put a relay on top of that. I think I'll put really on top of it. I could put one on the arm, of course. I could make put it, bring it down an arm here. I need to be a bit higher. I'm a bit too low. I'll use these jack o' lanterns. So I can break these with, with my hand, so that's no big deal. So let's put a relay on top of that now. And then we need to link these cables. And I'm sure I've forgotten that to get the extra cable that I need. Of course, that's normal. <laughs> 
So right click that on there and then link that to this rear net pit. Break this one because I could get and get a pair of cutters and cut it, but I was just as quick to break it, isn't it? So let's break that one. Right click that onto there and then to there. Let's remove these jack o' lanterns. We don't need these here anymore. And now let's get the other cable. But yeah, I'll do that with you. Think about pausing it, but I decided not to because it's just here. You get through these quite fast. In fact, when I was playing, testing this out, I get quite a lot of lag here as well. I think it's because of climatization, or I think it's yeah, climatization seems to be cause quite a reasonable amount of lag. Get over this, can't I? So now we can connect this up here. With a better look, we'll get eight, we'll get double that. So we have to turn this on again. So it's limited at the moment. Turn it on. 41. That can't be right. <laughs> That's strange, isn't it? Measuring it, F current flow is 41. I got 42 when I connected just one. Um, that doesn't make any sense. So I, no, there's nothing to do on that one, is there? Well, there you are. <laughs> That's a challenge. Why should I have got 41 when I. Let's just break this one again. I have to break both of them, don't I? Just test it. <laughs> Have I gone crazy? Let's put it on this one. Look, that's got two faces with uranium and packed ice. So that should also produce in 41. Stick that onto that. Link that in. Turn that on. 42. Right. And it tells you on this valve here. Right click it. It's flow is 42 RF per tick. Um, that's actually a challenge, I don't understand that. Let's turn that on to limiting so we don't fill up this LV capacitor. I'll try that again. That really makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. So that one, that one, they should be able to link into the trailer and go, they won't be charging each other up, I'm sure of that, because it wouldn't make sense. Nope, 41. Well, now that is not what I expected at all. <laughs> hmm, that's very strange. Okay, I'm going to have to leave that for the time being. I'll just turn that off so we don't... I'll leave this set up as it is. I'm sure you should get 40, 82, 84, which is, as, which is almost as much as a huge water wheel, so I'm confused. <laughs> that's, but you can see this has gone up quite a bit. And actually that was fairly short time unless this is it's not overflowing like it was here oh the other settings on this one by the way is you can reverse it so you can click that on the left hand side and this one says 78 but i think that's just from a hang up from before and it's also got a slight graphics book there and the other one you can then change it to binary which will be zeros hexadecimal you can change this from hexadecimal, hexadecimal as well. Still gives you naught. But we really want to decimal because we always still think in decimal, don't we? But and this one I want to be connected that way around. So that's how those work. That's how that works. And the fluid in the item sensors will work the same way, almost the same way as this. But let's take a look at the next thing. It's got two more bits of automated resin I want to look at today. And they're both quite neat actually. Uh, one of them is a bit more complicated. I think I'm not sure if I've got enough switches. Let me just make sure I've got a stack of cobblestone and some wood. I got picked up two stacks of cobblestone because I used an empty hand. Sticks. Let's make some sticks. Make 64, won't it? 
No, 32. Can't count. Forgot to halve it. So now the next thing we can make is this one, the 8 bit lever, which is basically 8 levers. So we can make 32. We're only going to make 8. I'll make 16 actually. I never know. I'm bound to need more levers. In fact, yeah, maybe 32 is a good idea. So we can then build one of these. In fact, I'm going to make two. Because you can use them combined. And this one here is the potentiometer. So we need one, we've got coal or charcoal. One redstone torch. We've got redstone torches in here. Let's take one of those out. And let's make this one. So that's a potentiometer. And what this does, the easiest way to demonstrate this is actually to put it on the back of this block here or maybe even the front of it will do actually let's put it on the front of this block here shift click it on um is that a bad idea oh no that's right i can still reach it so here it's got a value so the top value here is 15 so i click it to the top in fact i think if you click it on the actual line here it takes you straight to that line like that so that's got a redstone power of 15 in fact it tells you on my um one one probe display 10 5 and 0 so 0 doesn't show up 1 will show up as 1 of course and then 15 will be up here so these were oh, I've missed it try again so this one then we can then set this to limiting mode here so it says current flow is 15 RF per tick that's not quite oh yes it's limited oh yes so that's working then this should be going up it is so if we bring this right down again, it should get to, that should be 2, 1. So it's actually going at 1 RF per tick. Like that. And down at the bottom, turns it off. So it's not clicking up at all. Now I'm cold. That's interesting. Why am I cold? Nearby blocks, of course, because of the <laughs> packed ice. Oh, packed ice is minus 3. I better just... Um, put some warm clothes on actually let's do that because I'm going to freeze to death if I don't get some warm clothes on let's take the helmet off and put me put it up. Oh, it should be all right there four yeah fine so that's this block. oh now it's going to rain <laughs> am I going to get wet if I go under a tree no it's night time I'll come back and sleep I'll see you in a minute right that's that done and the next one is, is this block here let's remove that careful not to break everything so I was being careful with that one put this one on this is an 8-bit lever so I don't know that it tells you we've we got the set to limit mode we have haven't we current flow is zero now I think I'm just having a think do I need another display I thought these things would basically start at the bottom and that's that power 128 no it starts at the top that's power eight that's so it starts this side so one two four eight sixteen thirty two and so on and so forth so if i click on <laughs> this lv capacitor is a bit small and one of the mistakes i made when i was testing is i put an mv capacitor to here and of course this is LV side with these LV connectors going through this one. That didn't work very well at all, <laughs> as you can imagine. In fact, I might try that with this relay, see if it's actually working correctly. Anyway, so put all this and you get 255. But you can, I think you can put a second block beside this like that. And then you get a... 32-bit display now if I'm not mistaken let's put this one on here power 16 okay power 1 that's power 1 2 now do I have to can I link these together no I can't all right because that only gives us up to third that only gives us up to 32 one of the uh, eight bits I thought you could actually add them together, but never mind. Maybe you can. Maybe I just haven't figured it out yet. So that's it for this part of the 
episode. So I'm going to go now and find a mine. I want to test something out with you. So I'll see you in a few seconds. Right, I'm back here. Base is only 188 blocks away, and there's some redstone. There's some redstone. There's about f well, cinnabar. There's about four of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mine straight down on the corner of one of these chunks. So let's get the um, the, the chunks set up so we can see where they are. So around about here, I'm going to go straight down. I'll turn those off. Now I've got with me in my inventory here's a stack of gravel, just we might need it. So I've got a pickaxe. I'm going to use this the silk touch one and I've got the prospectus pick and the prospectus pick normally when you click on uh, on an area like this it'll tell you that there's deposits underneath you and in this case it's not doing so. so I'm going to take a chance that it's actually working so we're going to use two blocks here so the first block we'll just break with that one and then we're going to go down with this one we're going to keep doing this until we actually get down to around about bedrock I'll take it. I should do this side first, shouldn't I? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. And it gets dark, so we'll put him down a torch. So I'll just do it on the side here, like that. So we can see what we're doing. I feel as though I'm not actually exactly in the middle of this. That's, but that looks better, doesn't it? I don't want it to be too quick in case a cave. And actually, looking at this. You get the preview picture, don't you, sometimes? A little flash of what's actually coming up. And it does look like there's a cave behind me over there. And if we do find a cave, what I'm going to do is put down gravel. Now it gets dark again, so I'll put down another torch. see lava just in the on the left hand side of this one here to get back out again all I'm going to do is pull her up and we can hear some mobs too <laughs> that's a good indication we're getting down about how far have we got we've got to go down to about level 10 for a cinnabar so we're at level 33 I'm just going to take my time, and now both of the two blocks are flashing lava. And I can hear water running as well. And Detroit often does tend to, anthracite, tends to indicate we've got lava. Let's put down another block so we can see again. Safety first. Right, now we fit lava over here. So I'm going to move it across a little bit in that case. One block and carry on. What level am I I'm at? 18. So 18 is too far for the pick, I think. So we're going to go down to level 8. I, yes, we're going to go down to level 8. So this is a... F oh, yeah. There's our lava pool. Just missed it. That we saw the preview of. How are we doing now? Level 12. Let's get the pick out. That might be low enough now to actually see, see stuff. Ha! <laughs> Cinnabar found down from you. How about that? This way. No deposits in this direction. This direction. This direction. This direction. Or this direction. So Cinnabar's found down from us. I'm going to still take no risks. But we're not unlikely to get a cave at this distance now because we're at level 9. We will put down another torch. Oops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> As you can imagine, right, get my fingers right this time. Uh, so let's have a look now. Let's tell me where the pick's selling me. So it's east of you, no deposit in this direction. 
and deposits in this direction and down for you in both directions good let's go cap go keep going down there, there we go cinnabar see how big this area is doesn't look too big in fact let's move these two Just distance in this direction. Alright, that seems to be the, the outside bounds of that one. And that direction. Now what I do with Cinnabar is use silk touch. So I've got plenty of space in here, so I should be able to pick up all of this, pick up all of this cinnabar and get redstone ore. Like that. So oh we've reached bedrock shouldn't take too long but I'm not going to video it with you I'm going to just f do this and then come, come back in a few minutes well last block and <laughs> they really do get in and amongst the, the redstone really does get in and amongst the bedrock you think there might even be another piece down there no there isn't but there were I found pieces that are right down right down the bottom there so let's just get out of here now so all I'm going to do to get back up again is to take all of this stone that I've been digging up and just uh, power my way out. So look, I should have enough stone. Yep, yeah, I've got 628 blocks. So I'll see you at the surface. Right, I got back, just pulled my way out of that, no big deal. And this is the actual hole. Probably could fill a hole in. Let's do that just for safety's sakes. A piece of dirt. <laughs> oh, I also a creeper blew up just as I got out of the thing. I was looking around saying, are there any mobs? And sure enough, bang. <laughs> Fizz, bang. So I'm going to have a look at this other sample where has it gone to it's 185 blocks away not very far that one so i'll see you in a few seconds when we get there well i'm here and what i wanted to show i can't show basically i was we need to right click this there's no deposits in this area now if we go back i was hoping for it not to say that because if i go back over here i don't know whether this is going to work because i haven't tried this one either but here we've got some as your examples and if I right click the floor and find something it tells you you've got that in this area and I don't well, I'm pretty sure this works because I've done it before so we've got plenty of azurite here right click it and it picks it up of course but I'm not sure where if this actually is working I did I've definitely seen this working By right clicking the floor, it tells you sometimes you've got you'll find azurite in this area, for example. We shouldn't do that because I'm in the extreme hills. No, I'm in river. I was in the extreme hills just back there, so you get cold very fast. Just hoping this will actually show us something. All right, that's not working for me today. <laughs> what a surprise! <laughs> Usually it does work. Well, of course, you know, you're making the video, it's bound not to work, isn't it? That's the that's the rule. That's the rule for this stuff. Definitely the rule, and I'm sure it's happened in the past. Anyway, I've definitely found stuff in the past when you've right clicked it and it says underneath here you, you find as you write or whatever it is you're looking for. And that's where I would start to go straight down if it happens. But in this junk, there does not seem to be any at all. So that's it for this episode. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Next time, I think I'd like to set up a mob farm, um, especially in the nether. I might do that off camera. Anyway, what I also did is I got a, um, when it, over the harsh winter part, I f went fishing, of course did a lot of AFK fishing for about four hours something like that and got a mending book so I'm going to use Bibliocraft to make that mending book lots of and start sticking that onto stuff so until next time I wish you all the best bye for now